chapel, we pray God's blessings on our worship service this morning. Uh, are we going to begin with an opening hymn, Miss Rose? Uh, number 644. In, the, in this? 644 in your hymnal? 644. And we are going to sing <clears throat> verses 1, 2, and 4. Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one. 
one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, what will be these things, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must first take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say what is given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now continue on page 263. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation. 
Jesus' message today, um, he made a lot of people a little nervous and afraid. Because they were showing him this really, really big building, this temple that they all worshipped in. And they said, Jesus, isn't this a really big, cool, awesome building? But Jesus responded by saying, you know, the day is going to come when this building is, is going to get knocked down. It won't be standing here anymore. And so that made them nervous. And then he started talking about other things that would make some people nervous, like false teachers coming and earthquakes and famine and everybody turning against each other. And so when you hear what Jesus said today, it can make you a little bit afraid. But the thing that you have to remember is that you are God's child. And you are God's child because you believe that Jesus died and rose to pay for all of your sins. Because he did that, to pay for all of your sins. So since you belong to Jesus, there is no reason for you to end up being afraid. Because when the end of, end of the world will come, whenever that will be, and all this crazy stuff happens, you're not going to be a part of that because you're going to be taken up into heaven. All of those terrible things happening is what will happen when God judges sin, but your sins have been forgiven. And Jesus wants you to know that there is no reason for any child of God to ever be afraid of anything. Because Jesus is in control and you belong to him. And so that's what we're talking about today is how much Jesus loves you, how he has saved you, how you're going to heaven because of Jesus. And so when all of the wild stuff might start happening in the world, you don't have to worry about that because you are not going to have to face God in his judgment because Jesus already died on the cross for you. And so that's the message today. He made his apostles and his disciples very, very afraid. So they started asking him, when is all this going to happen? How are we going to know? Well, you stay ready for the coming of Jesus by simply believing in him, by staying in the faith, by believing that his death on the cross and his resurrection paid for all of your sins. And so as you stay ready then there is never anything to be afraid of when it comes to God. Well, how do you stay ready? Well, that's why we have to take care of our faith. That's why we have to always hear about Jesus. That's why uh, hearing about Jesus and what he's done for you, that's what makes us uh, continue to believe. So this is what makes chapel so important. You come here so you can be reminded of God's love for you in Christ. This is why going to church is so important, because we need to constantly hear the reminder over and over again. Because as we hear God's word preached, God keeps our faith strong. That's what he does for us. He gave you faith because he loves you, and he keeps that faith strong when you hear about Jesus, whether it be in the classroom or church or whatever. So that's our message for today, is that even though... The world might seem frightening at times. You belong to Jesus, so there is no reason for you to be afraid. So let's say a prayer of thanksgiving to Jesus. So repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to pay for all of my sins. Help me to never be afraid. If bad things start to happen, because you can remind me that I still belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and is it hymn time? Yes, 861. 861.
gift of divine peace and of pardon with all of our hearts and all of our minds, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all the faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for all who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O Lord, by your bountiful goodness, release us from the bonds of sin, which by reason of our weakness we have brought upon ourselves, that we may stand firm until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart. That by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we would embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together Luther's morning prayer. <clears throat> I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Okay, so how do we typically conclude then? Do you all stand and sing? I do not know if I'm even going to do that sometimes or all that.